one of the questions I love to try to understand is what is your hypothesis for why things worked out well for your family and why things tend to, I mean, I think the current statistics are something like 80% of evangelical kids fall away from their faith. I mean, it's just horrendous, the, the, the numbers. And so what it seems like is that there was a lot of intentionality. I, I, I was, you know, really interested in the integration Tyson between you and your dad and work. I think that, that, that's a, that's a key that a lot of people, you know, don't, don't get to experience, but yeah, I'd love to hear from Brooke, Casey, or, or Ty, what, what, what do you, what did you see growing up? Obviously I'm sure you had friends that were struggling and just what was it about your family that would cause you to not just say the typical sort of teenage, like I want to do what the opposite of my parents, <laughs> like, and so many of the people that I think we talked to assume that that's totally normal and that, that everyone's going to do that. And therefore there's going to be a huge fallout generationally. And so we don't believe that we're certainly not seeing that with our adult kids. So it has caused me to think that there is, there are things that maybe we're doing that are, we're kind of, that a lot of people are going along with the culture that, that is making it very difficult for their family to, to kind of move forward generationally. So, yeah, I'm curious what, you, what did you guys see? What is your hypothesis? Any, any variables, any practices, any beliefs, anything that's unique uh, that you saw in your family? I don't know who would like to start, but I'd love to hear from each of you if possible. Yeah, well, as I've pondered this, one of the things I've realized looking back is that my parents weren't too extreme one way or the other. So we weren't too legalistic that, that we had to do things a certain way and they weren't, you know, too lenient. They were intentional. Mm -hmm. So for example, we went to church every Sunday and it was a rhythm and it was a part of our life, but we didn't have to go to church. So sometimes dad would say, let's go for a drive today. <laughs> and we would go on a family drive and then we'd have this family day together and we'd have lunch and we'd go through old bookstores or we'd we do fun things as a family. And so it never felt like we have to go to church. And I, looking back, I wanted to go to church. Like we all wanted to go to church mm -hmm. and church was our community, our, our extended family. And we went to a small church that supported missionaries all over the world is this little church. And they supported like, I don't know, do you remember how many missionaries dad, like 50 missionaries? It was a lot. And they would come and they would share their stories with us when they were on sabbatical. And we developed relationships with those missionaries. Hmm. And then because my parents had just this open mentality of hospitality, and it wasn't like our house had to be perfect to have people over, my mom would just cook an extra lasagna and we would have the missionaries over for lunch. And so we would spend our Sunday afternoons, many Sunday afternoons, sitting around the table, visiting with missionaries. And so that it really expanded my view of who God was. And it wasn't like I was living in a little bubble. I got to see how God was working all over the world and, and develop those friendships with those missionaries. And so I think that that helped me to be grounded in my faith and to choose that for myself as I got older. It wasn't just something that my parents were making me do. It was something that I actually wanted to be a part of. Hmm. So oh, that's really good. That was a rhythm that I think was just really a blessing. That's great. Wow. Yeah. That being able to see through kind of that portal, all these different places where God's moving, I'm sure that that does something to your faith to, to interact and to have that done through the home. Like Jennifer, you said, your house is like an embassy, man, that must've felt that way to your kids as you hosted those missionaries that are coming and going. You know, one of the things that you mentioned, Casey, was the kind of striking the right balance when it comes to like trying to be intentional, but not legalistic. That's a really interesting, because I think, I think part of what I think a lot of Christian parents struggle with understanding is that when you give into a high level of legalism, it tends to create the sort of black sheep rule follower dynamic within this, within your children. Somebody does a really good job and realizes they can get a lot of sort of attention from the, their parents by perfectly keeping their rules. And then somebody realizes they're going to fail a lot at keeping the, the hyper legalistic standards. And so they just become a black sheep and it really rips the family apart because you start to see 
you know, a lot of these unhealthy roles develop amongst your children. We've talked a lot about that. Like, but at yeah. the same time, you can't be just like completely unintentional and just say, oh, like the answer is to have no structure and to have no leadership. I mean, and so this is a very difficult thing to balance. And I think you have to do it in relationship. I love Jennifer, when you mentioned that Brooke would go to a gym or whoever, like your kids were processing things, the six girls. So that, yeah, that relationship that especially I think is developed with the father can really help. It helps him calibrate that properly for the, for the family and, and his own leadership. I, I find that that's that if you start to distance yourself relationally from your kids and then just have a hyper legalistic or hyper like kind of anything goes attitude towards the way that you're leading your household, it really can cause like a lot of disintegration to happen. Thank you for listening to the Family Teams podcast. If you're enjoying this content or have learned something new, please make sure to leave a rating and review and share with a friend. To stay up to date with our events, new content, and products, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Family Teams.